Mark Roberts from the Institute of Veterinary Animal and Biomedical Sciences. The title of Mark's presentation, Macronutrient Intake of Dogs, Self-Selecting Diets, Varying in Composition and Containing Excessive Energy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mark Roberts. I'd like to take you on a brief trip down my memory lane if I may. My father worked with sled dogs in Antarctica in the 1960s, and I'd often hear stories of these animals that worked incredibly hard in very trying conditions consuming seal meat, a diet high in protein and fat, but with no contribution from carbohydrates. Now years later, I found myself with my own team of working sled dogs. However, this time, I was feeding them a standard dry commercial dog food one typically high in carbohydrates. And I wondered how we reached this point. So I looked at things from the very beginning and found clear evidence that dogs originate from these guys, wild wolves. And that wolves consume a diet which is high in protein and fat, but with a minimum input from carbohydrates. Of interest, some 10 to 15,000 years ago, dogs became domesticated, migrating into human settlements. And it is at this point that we saw carbohydrates start to feature more heavily in the diet and protein and fat decrease. Look at the so-called modern-day domestic dog. We now know that up to 90% are fed a dry, commercial, carbohydrate-rich diet in an industry worth over 70 billion US dollars a year. We also know that up to 40% of dogs are now classified as being overweight, with a further 20% being termed obese. With this, we see a rise in associated conditions such as diabetes, cardiorespiratory disease, and urinary disorders. So this led to the formation of my PhD thesis, namely to establish the dietary self-selected capabilities of the domestic dog. I did this by providing dogs with a buffet of protein, fat, and carbohydrate-rich diets to choose from. I essentially let the dogs just go for it. What I found was very clear evidence that dogs want to eat a diet which is rich in protein and fat but with an insignificant contribution for carbohydrates. I also looked at a range of feeding dynamics, finding, for example, that over 80% of dogs will approach, sniff, and consume a high-protein diet, 60% a high-fat diet, but only 18% of the dogs will approach, sniff, and consume a high-carbohydrate-based diet. Moreover, those dogs that approach the high-protein and fat diets not once, not once did I find my research, that they then decide to move on over and consume a carbohydrate diet. So where to from here? Well, I want to see what happens when we can find dogs to this high carbohydrate diet and see if they will overeat in an attempt to reach a certain level of protein and fat intake. And by doing so, will they run the risk of becoming overweight? I also again want to confine dogs to the high carbohydrate diet, but this time compared to the so called self selected protein fat rich diet and measure a whole range of health related death aspects. So, finally, for those of you that have dogs, when you go home and feed your dog tonight, ask yourself am I feeding my dog something it really wants to eat, or am I feeding something they have to eat? Thank you. Tell you what, if you'd said thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Judges. Um, thank you, Mark. Um, first of all, I think I need to commend you, I suppose, on behalf of the panel for your enthusiasm and, and I think for personalising your research. So your introduction relating to your family, I think, was, was terrific. Um, and, and I couldn't help thinking as I was listening to it, you know, what are the, is this some sort of parallel to the human condition that's emerging here? Um, or, um, or is there a distinction between domestic dogs that are pets and working dogs? And I just thought that your, your thesis and your premise, uh, going back to a historical connection and then passing through time essentially, just, just brought to bear so many other questions. And I, and, I, and I suspect you're going to be doing this for quite a long time before you get to the answer at the end of them, I think. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mark. Um, I also think you, you started with that personal connection, which uh, which certainly created a flow there, so, so that was good. And then we heard about the change to the domesticisation and therefore an increase in, in carbs in the diet. Um, and I think you sort of touched on perhaps the financial issue that the market has been saturated in that sense and what that might mean in terms of uh, future change or not, but also implications in terms of health um, of, of our dogs. But for me, it was a little bit of a, a 
a guilt trip there towards the end and forcing us all as dog owners, if we have a dog, to think about actually what it is that we're putting uh, in the food bowl. So well done. Congratulations, Mark Roberts.